So let's do this stoichiometric table for batch reactors. I got this diagram, this is our batch reactor, it's being mixed. And as you can see there are no inlets, no outlets, everything is inside. You got species A, B, C and D and why not some inert material. It might be, I don't know, a nitrogen gas or maybe water that is not reacting. Anything that is inert but this is still there, we are going to account it as inert. And we have two things, at the initial condition, so time equals zero, and at any time. So N of A, N of B, N of C, N of D, this means the amount at any time, and NA0, NB0, NC0 is at time zero. So of course, if you are having reactions, N of zero will never be the same as N of A at different times. So, mm, we have this reaction, let's suppose we have this reaction, we're going to change it in terms of our limiting reactant. So we will have one here and everything is divided by this coefficient A. Now, just to may remind you, we can relate the rate of reactions here. Okay, let's do this table. The initial amount of our moles, the change that our that species is going to have and the final amount we're going to get after that conversion. So for A it's very easy because it's our limiting reactant and we are basing everything on A. It's the initial amount of A, okay, the initial amount of B, C, D, I and total moles. That's very easy. The first column is the easiest one. Now the second one is the tricky one because we're going to calculate the change. So what happens when you react or you have a conversion of A moles? Well, you need to multiply x times this value here, and of course it's negative because you're losing amount. Let's do the same, let's relate, as you can relate here, a and b, we need to get this stoichiometric value here, and we still have n of a zero times conversion of a. This is the reactant, and these two guys are products, so that's why we got positive sign symbols here. So this is the stoichiometric relationship, stoichiometric relationship, because we are basing everything on A. You could, of course, write x of C, which will be kind of weird, but we want to relate everything to A. That's the point. We are going to base everything on species A. Okay? Just trust in me. And yeah, of course, if there's no change in inert material. If you add all these, you will get this as a common factor. Take it out. And this is minus 1 minus b divided by a plus c divided by a plus d divided by a. And the final value is essentially just the addition of this. So n of a at any moment or at any conversion is the initial amount plus the change. And since it's being react, the change will be negative. So this is here. Now let's do it for b. Initial amounts this number. Uh, and the change is also negative because it's reacting and the same for C initial amount here and you're going to have a positive change because it's reacting and also for the initial amount and the change here many times we're going to have that we have no initial amounts of the products which makes sense because if you're making a reactor and maybe you are just pouring inside A and B well, of course, you have no initial amount of C and D. And you can still have more of A. Let's say you have twice of, as in A, or maybe 10 times more than A, and still we are going to count it here. And once again, the initial amount of moles of inert material are the final amount of moles of inert material, because by definition, they are not reacting, so they don't have a change, and they stay the same. So if you Want to add that, you can add it, it's this value plus this value here. Please make sure you understand this table, if you have no idea, sorry, you have no idea what we're talking about is essentially look that this is the same. The only thing that changes is of course this, you can imagine A divided by A negative because it's reacting, B divided by A because it's reacting, C divided by A because it's being produced and positive D divided by A because it's being also produced. Okay. And one thing here, guys, 
probably you saw this huge number uh, in the book they call it this letter small d or Greek d is like delta but it's not the it's lower case so they got this value they call it delta so we're going to write it like this so you don't have to write everything and actually looks cool so the equation is this equation right here is the actual change in moles due to the reaction uh, let me show you an example for example a plus 2b gives you c a is uh, okay you have 0 d okay you have 0 d so that's why I, I wrote this zero here 1 to 1 this is c positive and you have 2 of b and you have 1 of a so you got this number what's the actual change of course you're at the beginning you got 3 moles and at the end you got 1 mole of course you're having a change of minus 2 moles you can do this the same here the same here the same here actually this is a nice case because you're going to have the same amount of moles you got 2 moles in the left and 2 moles to the right and you got of course the difference is 0 and don't forget always to divide these three so this will be actually a plus one third of c equals two thirds of d don't forget that and yeah i recommend you to check out every one of these so you get good at calculating the amount of moles in ch uh, changing due to the reaction and let me bring this little table here don't forget it uh, we are going to since we have it in moles n of a, n of c, n of d, n of i, n of no, total moles what will happen if I just divide by the volume of the reactor? well if I divide by the volume of the reactor I'm going to get the concentration which is nice because I told you before we want to work with concentrations and not only concentrations we're going to work with concentrations based on a so let's do this we got this little number here is here divided by volume this little equation here is divided by volume this equation is also divided by volume and this equation here is also divided by volume nice now in the book they define this strange number here any moles let's say n b initial moles of b divided by the initial moles of a they call it this i don't know a very strange number or variable I actually don't know the name of that variable, so just say, uh, call it circle H or H circle of A. Now, we got this from the, we're going to be basing this here. Actually, what we want to do is to relate these numbers and these numbers and these numbers once again to initial conversion of A. So let me do it here, concentration of B. I take this equation here, once again, I'm going to take this equation, don't get lost guys, this equation here, I'm going to develop it, so first thing first I want to do is take out n of a0, so I take n of a0 divided by n of a0, as you can see this number is 1, so I got this, the same value here guys, I'm just multiplying by 1, which is n of a0 divided by n of a0, and what will happen if I pass this number inside. I will get this value here and this one goes here also. I got this number here. And what a co coincidence we got our circle or H circle of B here. So let's write that. And I got this to be 1. So I got this equation. And as you can see I related to initial amount of A and to this number here and conversion of A and stoichiometric values here so as you can see I'm pretty much basing everything to A and I'm not going to do the same like the process I'm just going to show you how I will do it for C and D they get similar N of A of D the only thing that changes is of course this H circle of C and D circle no H circle of D divided by volume sorry here and what else changes this is the geometric value and this is the geometric value conversion of a and the initial amount of a here still are the same 
So once again, let me bring the new all the data. If volume is constant, I got this here to be this one here. Concentration. This is concentration of A. Concentration of A. Concentration of A. Concentration of A. This value here, this value here, and this value here, and the stoichiometric relationship, stoichiometric relationship, stoichiometric relationship. So this is what I want you to learn, guys, or at least not memorize, but write it in your formulary. This is what you want, and this is only value, uh, valid when you got constant volume. As you can see, everything is expressed in terms of A. You can see initial concentration of A in every equation. You can see the conversion of A in every equation. And you can see that all these stoichiometric values are based on A. So B divided by A, C divided by A, D divided by A. So that's what I wanted to get, guys. Now, those equations are valid only when the volume is constant. Why? Because you will see that, for example, I divided by volume, n of a. But what happens when the volume changes? Well, we're going to have some problems. But let me tell you when do we have constant volume. We have constant volume in liquid phase reactions, and we have constant volume when we have isobaric, isothermal reactions of gases with no changes in moles. So first things first, this must be zero, and you must have P1 equals P2 and T1 equals T2. So it's a very, like a very not that common case, but we have it. But essentially, don't get lost. If we have liquid phase, we can use this. If we have gas phase, don't go with it. Go with the uh, assumption that you cannot use this equation. And we're going to derive other equations that are valid for volumes uh, or changing volumes when we don't have constant values. So the equations we just got are not valid when you got gaseous phase reactions with change of volumes. So you have delta, any value that is not zero, well, you cannot use it. If you have change in pressure, you cannot use it. You have change in temperature, you cannot use it. So essentially, when it's a gas, don't use it, and when you have liquids, use it. And this is a diagram I got from the book. It's this here. Now, this is our equation. Either you got liquid phase or gas phase. I told you, when you're liquid phase, we watch the batch reactor. We're going to see in the next video flow reactions, the reactors. Uh, we got this here. And because the volume is the same, we can use these equations, which are the ones we got. Hopefully you remember, this is the reactions. No, these are the equations we just got here. Let me go back. This. This here. Okay. What else? The special case for the gas phase and the batch. So we were analyzing batch. The gas phase. And when you got constant volume, you can use it. So if you got constant volume, you can use it. That is not the case, so we're going to see that you need to do all this stuff. Actually, a little bit more. We continue doing it. So it's kind of complicated when you got gas phase. Look at all these numbers also. So the best case scenario is a liquid phase here. And we're going to do this exercise in the next video. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other.
Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.